Well, good <laughs> evening, everyone. My name is Ashley Revolinsky, and I am the executive director of the Lake Geneva Symphony Orchestra. I'd like to welcome you to our first ever virtual pre-concert chat. Tonight, I am joined with by two of the musicians from the Lake Geneva Symphony who were a part of our recordings that we released this week. They call themselves the Oak Grove Strings and I'd like for you all to meet them. So let's start with Brandon. Yeah, so hello everyone. My name is Brandon Kruder and I am currently a violist with the LGSO, um, but I joined the group in 2007 when I was still a violin player. Um, and then I kind of left around 2011, went to college for around eight years, and then the pandemic brought me back to southeastern Wisconsin. And so um, this recording that we ended up doing was the first thing uh, that I've done with the LGSO since um, I think 2013. Aww. So it's been a long time for me. Yeah. Well, that's an interesting, that's an interesting story. Um, I saw an ad today for a woman who specializes in violin to viola conversions, violinist to viola conversions, and, and, and her headline is, come to the dark side. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what we say. <laughs> yes, awesome. in any event, so. Funny. <laughs> All right, yeah. Richard, how about you introduce yourself? Well, I'm, I'm Richard Twin. I've been with the Lake Geneva Symphony for since about 2005. So this is a long time. And I am an amateur musician that started very late in life in my, basically started to play seriously in my 50s. So it's, uh, this has been quite a journey. And, uh, and so I, this has been, uh, this has been a lot of fun, been a very interesting year. I also serve on the board of directors. I'm also the treasurer. So I'm always concerned. I'm always counting the nickels. So very nice. So your group is called the Oak Grove Strings. How did you found the group? Um, how did you all find each other? And how did you come to that name? Uh, well, this, uh, this all happened last summer. And of course, when we had to cancel our concerts, and it was apparent that that we were just not going to be able to play live anywhere. Uh, we, we ran for cover and David finally came up and said, you know, Maybe what we should do is just small uh, is is form smaller groups and play outside where it can be safe and everyone wears masks and everyone stays socially distanced and we'll find places we can play outside and move forward with it. And he appointed Don Soath, who's I was hoping would be here, but apparently can't, uh, as the head of this. And what we did is we met at one of our members' houses outside in, in, in her, uh, on her uh, parking pad. It's a wonderful house way out in the country filled with oak trees, beautiful ancient oaks. It's really nice. Now, they've mowed all the lawn within an inch of its life around these oaks, but they're still beautiful oaks. So we started playing there and we, you know, we felt that part of what would make this fun is for each of the groups, because there were like six groups formed. We said, well, we, let's give ourselves a name. So we had a contest. We had a couple of probably half a dozen different ideas. And one of them was the Oak Grove teams that won the battle because we first played in an Oak Grove. It's kind of like in a TP, you look out the TB is first thing you see. Oh, that's an elk. You're elk. Okay, oak groves, oaks were what we saw. Very nice. So describe your experience performing together as a group for the first time, really since the coronavirus pandemic went down. What was that like? Well, what yeah, do you I mean, mean performing together? Like, uh, what, I mean, are we talking about last summer? Are we talking about our recording last fall or recording in, in February or playing live last week? Let's talk about a combination of all of that, um, because it was a long time since anyone played with real people in a room. Um, how about the first time any of you kind of made music with others since the pandemic? Well, when we first met in the Oak Grove, um, it was like a, bu a bunch of hungry people who were just excited to get together and play. And it was, it was really terrific. 
And Dawn, it, Dawn is wonderful because she is actually a music director herself. She can conduct. She is she's done it at, at the high, at the grade and high school level for many years. And and so she just brought, um, you know, all the skills that you would have out of someone like David on a on a more miniature scale. So she would just bring music and, and various members would bring their own music and we'd read through it. Um, and, uh, and, and eventually what we decided to do is one of our practices was going to be in somebody's backyard and, and the neighbors could come by and see, it was be perfectly beautiful night. So we had a sort of a concert and, um, and we just started working through music and it was just terrific. She, we'd probably read two or three new pieces a night. We'd work on a few others and, and then, uh, and then go on. Cool. So it seems like you tried a lot um, of different pieces every week. How did you decide on the four that were going to be recorded? Well, we started, well, let's sort of continue on with the drama because what happened is it was great for the summer. In fact, actually what we did is we started playing occasionally and having practice concerts at people's houses and things like that. But the weather started getting cold starts to get dark at night, got to go inside, needed to do. And part of the problem is, is here we've been playing together probably three, for three months. And the question is, to what end? What are we going to do with this? So um, <clears throat> we, you know, I talked to the, uh, the board of directors and got an okay to do recordings. So what we did is, uh, is we started, we narrowed down items to things that we knew we could play and play well. And we actually hired a videographer, which is the first time we've ever like invested in that sort of thing. And, you know, the, the, the local church where we would normally play was usually empty because they're all trying to stay socially distanced. So um, uh, we, we picked a few tunes, one tune, the, um, it was a whole piece uh, the Brook Green Suite, um, fairly straightforward to play well. And the second one was the uh, Caroli uh, Christmas Concerto. And so we, the reason we picked the Christmas Concerto is we knew that this wouldn't come out till Christmas. It'd be a great Christmas present for everybody. And so what we did is uh, we, we organized this thing. We shot it in November with an idea of releasing the video in December for Christmas. And I think it was a very much of a success, so. Very nice. So Brandon, you were featured as a soloist in one of the recordings, um, actually the one that's coming up tonight. Yeah. Um, what was that like? Mm -hmm. How was the preparation different for the recording session versus say a live concert? Yeah, well, so I guess I'll answer those questions and a couple more that are also sort of circulating in my head. Um, so, uh, Richard, you were speaking about Dawn Soweth. She was actually the one who first told me that you all were meeting together as the Oak Grove Strengths because I had no idea any of this was happening back in January. And so she kind of got me into it. And then I said, um, hey, I have this Telemann concerto that I've played a couple of times over the years. And I think it could be a really fun piece to do um, with the string ensemble. And so that's how that piece sort of fell in there um and you know i had a lot of fun with it because uh, it's just it's such a amazing piece it's just really upbeat um has you know it's one slow movement that's not quite as upbeat but um you know overall it's just such a pleasant piece to listen to i thought this would be a lot of fun put, to put together with everyone and i've done it in this kind of context i think three times now um so it felt familiar to me um, and it was really easy to put together with everyone. Um, and so it was a great fit, I think, for the Oak Grove strength at the time. Absolutely, yeah. you did a terrific job. And uh, um, what we had done is we had, actually Brandon was Johnny come lately to this. Uh, we'd, we had three other pieces that we were planning on doing because we had two solo pieces. And uh, of course, those of us who've been around the Lake Geneva symphony for a while, no uh, branded by reputation. And uh, I remember when you came back from your first year in college and you were utterly transformed. It was just like, 
you, you'd pass mm. through some sort of musical puberty and now all of a sudden you're a grown up. And uh, the, it was really, uh, it was really fantastic to see. So I knew we were in for some great, uh, great performance and uh, I was certainly not disappointed. And I don't think the audience will be either. Thank you so much. <laughs> I want to share um, a quote from Lori Cornu, who was the soloist for the Haydn Concerto that was released earlier this week. Um, and she says she has heard it played many times, but had never done the solo part. I was honored that Don Soth asked me to read it at one of our early 2021 rehearsals and blessed that it came pretty easy to my fingers. It was a real treat to perform. Being photographed by a drone with a camera was probably the most <laughs> unique experience for me. I want to know more about that drone. <laughs> Oh, well, um, our, the, the videographer that we work with, his name is Dave Fiedler, and he runs a place called Geneva Lakes Creative. And his specialty is doing drone work. And so you, he's got drones, you know, flying over Lake Geneva and visiting properties and businesses and all this kind of thing. And that's, that's sort of his calling card. Um, and we, you know, we had been, you know, we, we had done the first recording at the uh which was back in november <clears throat> and it was really his first experience he'd done some musical recording of like rock groups and things like that but not really with a group exactly like this and we just over prepared for that event but we also learned a lot of things that that worked and didn't work and trying to get decent camera angles and uh, when we came back for the second recording he brought the drone. I was very excited about this. I thought this has got to be cool. And um, the way we shot this is in, in order to, to really get a good quality video, and you're going to see a lot of great videography work here, is we shoot all the detail shots first. So we do close ups here and we do we get the nice angle shots. So it has artistic value. And then there's a performance. Well, you don't want to have the cameraman wandering around the performance. So uh, the second, and then what we did after we did all the detail shots is, <clears throat> is we ran the whole concert. In fact, that all four videos that are being released this week were done as one performance. Could have been a live performance. And, uh, and so the, uh, the detail shots were taken in an earlier take. <laughs> Fortunately, of course, we were all warmed up by the time we get to play. We'd already made our mistakes on the first go wrong. And Lori, who was a little trepid about being a soloist, um, and we were, we were just kind of worried what would happen, you know, because he's not only is he shooting pictures of Lori, but he's got a GoPro camera there so he can get a close up all the time. And then he pulls out the drone and she's doing the first solo piece. This was the first one we're doing. And all of a sudden you've got the, while she's trying to do a cadenza. Oh. And, and you know what? It was terrific. And it was terrific a couple of ways because number one is if she could actually perform the cadenza and she did it well with the drone and all the little cameras on her. And then by the time we get to the actual performance, she was great. So it was just perfect. That's awesome. Was the drone really loud? Was it was loud bad? enough. It was loud enough that you wouldn't want to have one in concert. I mean, one of these days you're going to get super quiet ones. And then, you know, unfortunately, it's against the law to have a drone with a live audience in the room. Really? Um, hmm. Yeah. So wow. we're not. And, uh, and yes, I asked. Uh, <laughs> but... <laughs> I, you know, you could just imagine these babies swooping around. That'd be pretty exciting. I mean, you know, if you ever look at the BBC proms and you see all the camera work that they do there, I mean, they've got the cables, they got this, I mean, Sunday night football, I mean, uh, forget the proms. Uh, you know, they've got, uh, they got all sorts of things going on there. So uh, I, you know, he really did a, just a wonderful job at, at this uh uh, at, at our February shoot. Awesome. I remember a couple of years ago, I played for a wedding actually in Lake Geneva. So I wonder if it was the same videographer. Um, it was outdoors and it was just kind of in between moments of the ceremony and we hear this buzzing. I'm like, what's <laughs> going on? And we look up and there's a drone. And 
I'd never experienced that before. I'm like, that must be some really awesome footage. So it's, it's something else. It, it can be pretty exciting. And, and, uh, yeah, it, it was either him. It actually, it's probably illegal for him to do it. So maybe somebody else had the drone. Of course, you didn't get to see the the uh, the results, did you? No. Yeah. All right. So, um, is there anything you want the audience to listen or watch for in any of these videos, or really any behind the scenes things you want them to know? Hmm. You know, with my concerto, I feel like there's really not a whole lot to say about it. It's such a it's such a straightforward piece. But I guess if I could comment on the the videography, um, I think they did an excellent job with this because I mean I think a lot of us there um, when we were doing the recording session, we were unsure how this product was going to end up. I mean, the drone was pretty freaky and distracting. And we, I mean, I know I was skeptical. I was like, I don't know how this is all going to come together, but I mean, I don't think I've ever had a better, um, video shoot done of one of my performances ever. So it's, it's pretty cool to see it. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I guess just appreciating the, the video quality is really, I think, the centerpiece of this project. Yeah, I was very impressed by that. Um, just everyone's live streaming nowadays. Everyone's making content, putting it out there. And I'm just so sick and tired of orchestras that are just doing one angle that's literally mm. no better than you're at the auditorium, you're at a concert and you didn't make it back to your seat in time after going to the bathroom at intermission <laughs> and you're stuck watching the screen. And some of these, I'm just like, really? Like, I can't make out any of those faces, but here you really get to see every single musician really up close. You can see their technique and it's awesome. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Google, it who is the videographer? Like they deserve so much credit on this. Well, it's, it's uh, Dave Fiedler, Geneva, uh, Geneva Lake creative. And uh, did you see at your wedding, was it a really tall guy? A little get just graying, I just reasonably heard, handsome. There were a lot of people there, but I just remember seeing the drone in the sky. So. Okay. Well, <laughs> and it's not like he comes in and says, Hey, that's my drone. Right. <laughs> Yeah. No one wants to own up to the drone. <laughs> no one wants to own the drone, but <laughs> they all they all want the uh, they all want the results. So, no, actually, I have a little side story. Uh, so I travel internationally a lot, and sometimes I'll meet people traveling, like other backpackers, and they will have drones with them, and we'll be like at some landmark, and they want to do a drone video of wherever we are, and I get so embarrassed every single time I'm out with these people because. Like being with someone who has a drone is just so annoying. It creates such a spectacle and everyone like watches you and like they see it fly up. I'm just like, I don't want to be associated with this person. <laughs> I think it's it's best to just not know who's doing the drone. <laughs> Anonymity. Well, actually, I'm not sure whether did we, it, it, was there any drone footage in your video? I don't I, I think I think we tried it. I don't the, think so. Yeah, I think what happened is the drone was was uh it's a funny part of it but the the angle was so high that uh, it was sort of an experiment we tried didn't quite work out the way we would like and uh so it, it didn't make the cut but uh, a lot of great stories around it yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> and all of this is really part of a longer term program that we have to provide better recordings of all of our all of our events. And so it, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty nice to be able to do it where we did it. Um, we also recorded the concert from last week and, and the whole idea is to keep learning so that we can get to a point where when we have a Keith concert, like we've got a wonderful collection of music we'll be performing next year. And it would be great to have videos of it for any number of reasons. Not everybody can make the, uh, the concert. It'd be great to to uh, offer that to people who like the orchestra but can't actually get here. Um, I think it, it will help with grant writing and, get, and showing what we can do to people who may be uh, able to support the orchestra. And uh, 
And I think it's a great learning tool for the performance. Um, that's one of the things that uh, we did a lot of recordings over the past nine months. And so it's a great form of feedback, and especially for someone who's a student like myself. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think it's really cool that now you can do a performance and come home, whether it's that night or later when the video is done and you can watch yourself play. I haven't done that since I was probably in high school or maybe college. So it's been a while and it's just really fun to kind of see what the audience sees for once. Yeah, except if I, you know, you're really good at what you do. Uh, those of us who are students get to find their mistakes. So <laughs> Oh, we do too. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's safe to say that um this like last concert season, this concert season, and probably the future, it's definitely the beginning of just being the most well documented years of orchestras. And I think that's gonna be really neat just to have that footage to go back on and definitely the start of something really nice. Yeah, yeah. the bandit, we should call ourselves the bandit, Oak Grove Bandits. Uh, for the masks, <laughs> but uh, I, I'm looking forward to concerts that I don't have to wear a mask. Hopefully I think everyone's, everyone's looking forward to that. <laughs> I kind of want to see, because you call yourselves the Oak Grove Strings, I feel like you should go by the oak trees in the fall, have a drone, maybe do Vivaldi's Fall. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So many ideas here. <laughs> uh, guess what? Your your meeting has just been increased, so we probably have been been talking too long, but that's okay. Will. That's good. This is this is really fun. It's really fun to chat with the musicians, see kind of what goes on behind the scenes, and before I came along to this organization too. So, is there yeah. anything else um you both want to add? Oh, I don't think particularly. No, I guess I was thinking, um, is the Oak Grove Strings, I guess Richard maybe could expand on this, is this something that we're thinking of maybe keeping even once the LGSO kind of comes back into full, like um, having kind of a chamber orchestra of, of sorts? Well, I would love to have a chamber orchestra. I, it doesn't need to be the Oak Grove Strings. That was totally arbitrary. Um, but I, yeah. I think doing uh, some terrific, um, some some really good chamber music, um, things like opera. You know, not every not every operatic performance needs a full symphony behind it. So we have right now the Lake Geneva Symphony has one flavor, and the one flavor is big symphony. And then occasionally we will have a recital. And I would love to formalize a program of having smaller ensembles being just as well prepared, just as programmed. Now that gets us into our, our concert of last week, which was a, is, as well planned a concert as we would have had if David was here. In fact, David actually had a part of helping us put it together, but <clears throat> you know, where you have a flow from, from one performance to the next, bring us to the climax that we want to have is that that people expect when they are going to a concert and uh, but do it with smaller orchestras and interesting things that we might not be able to to accomplish with a large orchestra i mean uh lake geneva has a long a very a close relationship uh with the lyric opera and it'd be great to have some pieces that might have smaller ensembles and some very cool vocals and uh and among other things. And there's great repertoire out there for strings and um, I can't wait to attack more of it. So whether that's done as Oak Grove yeah. strings or something else, not really important. It's, it's really about the Lake Geneva Symphony. I love that. <laughs> so I have another quote from a musician that was not able to make it tonight. And I think it's kind of a good quote to kind of close out the <clears throat> evening. Um, this is from Lori Meyer who plays cello. I was so grateful for the opportunity to participate in the Oak Strings recording and the recent live performance. I was involved with another chamber ensemble and our two ensembles merged. I didn't realize how much I missed playing in an orchestra and performing for a live audience until we were able to go back to it again. I look forward to more of a normal routine schedule at the Lake Geneva Symphony next season. 
Great. All right. Well, thank you both so much. Um, it was fun chatting with you both and learning really about the drone. I'm so fascinated by that <laughs> and everything else. Um, so much went into these recordings and I just encourage everyone to go watch every single one of them. Um, even if you didn't have a chance to catch them live this week, just kind of sit down and binge watch it. It's way better than Netflix. <laughs> exactly. And better for you. Well, thank you very much. This has been really terrific, Ashley. Great. Thank, yeah, thank you. you <laughs> okay. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>